This is episode four of Famous Faces Unmasked. In this podcast, we delve deep into the hidden stories and untold truths of some of the most popular individuals. In Famous Faces Unmasked, we unmask the real people behind the fame. And today we have Denise, a.k.a. Elena Goes Viral. Yeah. Um, thank you for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I feel like this was a long time coming. Yeah, yeah. We've definitely. been following each other for a long time. It was, it was a while. We, we, we had the uh, like ups and downs trying to get an appointment. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but wh why the two names? Why are you Denise and Elena? Well, Denise is my name. Okay. Elena is a character I created on TikTok yeah. because I wanted the content that I created at a time not to reflect who I really am. Okay. So I created a whole separate character with its own name and its own persona. Got it. Got not it. to be confused with okay. this accent. <laughs> yes, yes. Give us a little bit of that accent. Wait, let me just like roll my eyes and get into character. Hello, my name is <laughs> Elena and I do not like people. I only like myself and money. You like money? I like money. Okay. How much money? All of it. Like if I want to marry you, how much do I like? All of it. All Crypto, of it. Crypto, dollar. <laughs> okay, okay. I like yeah, I I like that character of yours on social media. Yeah. Um, so speaking about Denise, so yeah. you are in the uh, entertainment business, right? Yeah. Media. You're Careful a media what graduate. you say, because entertainment business means right. something else where I'm right. from. <laughs> entertainment is movies and TV shows. <laughs> yeah. And then media is the career itself. So yeah. you're in, you're a media graduate. You do emceeing. Mm -hmm. You are a stand up. You want to start stand up comedies, from what I understand. Yeah. And you're a content creator, right? Yeah. So what do you do besides that? Well, currently I'm a marketing manager at a very corporate firm. Okay. So during the day I wear a suit and do corporate things like following up on this email as per my last. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, marketing manager. Yeah, which mm -hmm. I really love. I work for a really cool company. Mm -hmm. uh, can I say it? Yeah, of course. It's VirtuZone. They're really cool. Yeah. I love what they do. They work with a lot of um, startups and entrepreneurs and it's given me the, the opportunity to like go on radio and do TV and do all these other interesting things. So mm. I really like my job. And... On the side, like you said, I do a lot of my, my little comedy skits and content creation, which has slowly turned into a business, Yeah, um, which is great. That was always the goal from the beginning. That's great. Yeah. What's your toughest career moment? Well, I lost my job in 2020 and like a lot of people did. What job? I was work. I was doing marketing for Vox Cinemas. Oh wow! Yeah, and unfortunately, they had to let a lot of people go because the cinemas weren't in function for like four or five months at a time. We had to be let go, so there was no money coming in. You stopped uh, uh, cutting out the kissing scenes in the movies. <laughs> I don't know. I don't work there anymore. So. Uh, they used to. They used to. They used to cut them out. Now yeah. they keep them. There was a lady from the government that would come and watch most movies, and then until she has her. You know, notes done, we cannot air the, the film. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Whenever we knew she's coming, like, okay, well, tomorrow we find out how long the movie's going to be in okay, the cinemas. Okay. That's, that's so a that good was, information. That was really interesting. I liked it. It was a cool career. Um, I loved everybody that I met there. Still, I'm still friends with them. But when I lost my job in the middle of, of the pandemic, I had no way of getting out of the country. I didn't have a lot of money because it was a starting job and my family is all over the, the world as well. I have family in Qatar, which was a lot stricter than Dubai was at the time. And I was also going through a breakup. <laughs> so mm. I felt myself in that pit of, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. My visa might run out. They were nice enough to keep my visa for, for a while. Okay. Um, but that's when I picked up, I took a risk and I got a trade license and I started an agency. Got it, got it. No experience. And what happened to that agency? The agency ran well. So because I had to find a way to support myself, I also do fitness. My sister is a trainer. My mom's my mom used to be a trainer. So I did some um some some courses with her. Right. And never thought they were gonna come in handy. Mm. They came in handy. I do fitness for myself and I was like, you know what, I I'm very passionate about this. Should I try to make money out of it? So I would there was a time when I would wake up at four in the morning to get to my first client at five AM. Um, have clients until eleven come home, work on the agency, learn how to build a website from scratch because I didn't have the money to pay somebody else. Right. Learn design, learn everything, go back and train some more clients in the evening and sleep by 9 p.m. And I did that for about four months, mm. nonstop. And then the agency took off, so I stopped training. The agency worked very well for quite some time. Where's the agency right now? Um, I've disconnected it. Disconnected, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, I've canceled but it. But luckily now you work, uh, you're happy with your current yeah. job. 
Yeah, I can't uh, complain. Your social media is doing very well. You're close Hand to a million. Down. Yes. Right? You're going to get that plate very soon. TikTok, please get me my plate. We're going to talk to TikTok <laughs> for this. Yeah, definitely. I worked very hard. Yeah, you do. You do. I really like your content. Thank it's you. Nice. It's nice. It's funny. I find it funny. Speaking of your content, do you have haters? Oh. I ask this to everybody. Honey, you can't be successful without them. Oh, of course. If everybody likes you, then you bland. Right. You know, you're just like bread with no salt. Right. Like Hillary. Yeah. Who? No one. Exactly. <laughs> my point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of course I have haters. Okay. Why, I, why, why do people hate you? What do they hate you for? I like to think I play a little bit of controversy, you know? Right. So I play on people's nerves a bit. There's their strategy behind what I do. Like what? Um, well, the sugar baby content that was the... popular when I started. And that's what made me blow up, actually. It went from zero what to... What triggers them exactly? I find the videos funny myself. Yeah. But I want to know what triggers these the, the people that hate you. You find it funny because content. you're an intelligent man and you realize that this is a skit and, right. you know, it's not really poking at reality. But I think a lot of people don't like the notion in itself, which I understand, you know. I mean, I'm not really promoting the sugar baby lifestyle. If <laughs> anything, I'm ironically making fun of it. Right. You know what I mean? You no, know, you are. You are making fun I of it. I am. Because yeah. I couldn't be further from that myself. Right. But I jumped on a trend that that I knew was going to get me the views, yeah. you know, and I was like, oh, pissing people off works because they fight each other in the comments and it pushes my content out. It so does. a lot of the things would be like, oh, women like you, I hate women like you. This is why women are single. You're going to be single in your forties with 20 cats. That sounds great. First of all, I like cats, mm. <laughs> but there's a lot of like men, women hating each other, you know, um, that comes with that. And then people stereotyping the whole uh, d girl in Dubai getting pooped on and whatever for money. Porta potty, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know about this. There, I had, uh, I had, a, I had to hire a company to actually count the articles that were written about the video that I made. There were 171 articles written about me porta from the porta potty <gasps> video that I made. Oh my god! Uh, so I pretty much responded to someone debunking a lot of false information about the porta potty video. Yeah. So people were saying how Arabs fly women fly women from outside to Dubai yeah. and pay them so they can have the, you know, to eat shit and get pooped on and stuff like that. Is there a video? There is a video, but you can clearly see a, a, a white man's... Sounds like white bottom. people activities. It's a white, yeah, a white man's bottom. And um, you can hear the Southern American accent in the video. Oh, no. So they immediately blamed it on Emiratis. Like... Yeah. We don't, we, I mean, look, in every culture there are like, and from every race, from every nationality, for, in every country there are nasty people. Of course. But I have never seen an, like a nasty Marathi that would actually do that, you know? And if they were to do it, they wouldn't do it in Dubai. They wouldn't film it. They wouldn't do it in Dubai, honey. Yeah. And There's countries where you can go and you, do things on the low and no one right, will find out. Right. <laughs> The flying hot women and paying for everything, that, that yeah, sure, yeah, people that do that in here. Monaco. There, are, there are Arabs that do that, but they don't poo on them. <laughs> they maybe, you know, they, they have fun with them. They give them a nice time. They get them hotel rooms. I mean, they, look, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a judge at the end of the yeah. day. God judges yeah. people. Yes, it's haram to do these things, fly Instagram models and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, hang around, party with them and stuff, and then just fly them back. But uh, but usually it's um, I've been told by one of these women that it was British old British men that did that, mm. and that's what uh, America and a lot and many many countries in Africa don't understand. Mm -hmm. A lot of Americans also don't understand. They hate the they hate a Arab guys from Dubai because they think the Arab guys are doing that. I think it's they hate the rich, which is a new. Yeah, the rich have always been hated. The yeah. successful have always been hated. Right. Um, but there's all that it's like you have the the worst of both worlds. It's like rich and Muslim. Mm. You know, and you get all the propaganda against Islam that's been happening in the West. And you put those two together, it's the perfect hate subject. Yeah. It makes sense why people would want to talk about it. Because it makes them feel better. Like, oh, I'm less successful, but you know, at least I'm not these guys. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's very simple psychology. Ah, uh, what to do? <laughs> Dubai has a lot of haters. Of course. And there's, it's deeper than that. There's actually propaganda. There's a lot of, um, there's payments being sent out by organizations to speak bad about Dubai. 
Really? Yeah. There's there's paid negative there's there's paid negative PR on Dubai. But who would who would benefit from this? See, what I'm legally allowed to do is say I don't know. Okay. But I'll tell you when the cameras go off. I can't wait. Yeah, uh, <laughs> How long we have left? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I will tell you. <laughs> Dubai, the Arab world, and you know, I've lived in Qatar before. I've I've been in the GCC for a while, and I wouldn't have continued to live here if I didn't love it. And every time I go back, I get the same. I come from a village. We can get into that a bit later. Very simple, simple, humble place. Right. And people are like, you, you over there with them, Ar- with them Arabs. Oh. Now, what are you doing to you? You know what I mm. mean? Like, how, how do you lift it? You gotta cover up. You gotta, you gotta wear a niqab, or they don't know what it's called a niqab. Yeah. They're trying to explain that to me, and I'm like, no, we, you have internet, like it's you optional. can see, yeah. like it's, it's one of the most, I don't know, culturally embracing places I've ever been in is Dubai. Do you think women and men in Dubai are treated equally? In what way? Rights, privileges, etc. From the outside looking in, no. I think women are more protected than men in Dubai. I think we have more rights. But I think that if you harass me, you know, if I make a call in Romania... Just you being a woman is leverage. Yeah. If I make a call to the police, say this man harassed me, he's like, what's your proof? Well, whatever. They won't even, they won't care. But over here, they take it serious. They do. They protect women. They do. And that's one of the things that to me is so funny when they say women are so oppressed over there. But you don't understand the protection that we get. That men don't have the same protection that we do. You right. can't call the police and say this lady was harassing. Maybe you can. But I have more leverage, like you said, than you do. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Especially uh, the all like almost all the GCC. Because like back then, yes, in Saudi, women didn't have as much as much rights before. Yeah. Like they couldn't drive. You know? yeah. But now they do. Now they do. Now men and women in Saudi Arabia are equal. Yeah. And Dubai, it always has been. Um, but, you know, are you a feminist? I would like to consider myself a classical feminist. Not modern day. Not modern day. Good. The basis of feminism. Yeah. Modern day feminism is toxic. It's not good. For women, by the way. Right. I think it's bad for us. And I think yeah. it badly reflects on us. And I don't think it helps Young women because at all. The first question I ask a modern day feminism, uh, if I'm, if I'm a modern day feminist, is is just one question: Do you think that men and women are treated the same? They're like, yeah, today's society. Do are there rights that men have that women don't? No. So what are you fighting for? What are the rights you're fighting? Okay, for? let me backtrack on that. Are men and women equal? Absolutely not. No, they're not. Everything in our chemistry is different from right. our hormones to our brain to yes. our body parts. Correct. Do men have more rights than women? In some cases, because men can give birth, there are certain rights that don't apply to them, that apply to women. So if you look at it that way, mm. do the same rights apply to both? No, because there are certain circumstances that a man could never find himself in. What like does birth have birth. to do with it? For example, like... If you want to go a bit deeper into the whole abortion thing, right? Uh, I don't the, talk about abortion. Okay. We don't have to touch yeah. that. But it's just, that's not something that could ever yeah. be affected. Well, what is a feminist, th- is generally, because I, I don't know. What is a feminist's point of view about abortion? Are they pro-abortion or against abortion? I think they're pro. And the pro only, meaning abortion is okay. Not that it's okay. I don't think anybody should be promoting that in the first place. I think it's a last resort that some women have to get to. And in some cases, I think it's necessary. The cases of abuse and the cases of, you know what I mean? Like yes. a violent way of or getting Or if both care. don't want a child. Sure, right? right? If both sides yeah. go like, okay, wait, this is not the right time. Look, religiously speaking, it's haram. Yeah. But I understand if it was a mistake. Yeah. And both sides go like, shit, like, what do we do? It's also unfair to men if, let's say, your loved one and it happens and she gets pregnant and... and- you want it and she doesn't want it and uh, she goes on. I don't you know think no I mean? man wants um, a baby that was by accident. But you know what I mean? Like the right. husband was like, well, she doesn't want to keep it. I want her to keep it. And then it's it's unfair for you that she takes that choice without you. But it's also unfair when women who got to that place and against their will and they're forced to keep it. It's such a sensitive subject that yeah. I feel like <laughs> we can sit in here and debate for hours. Yeah. I, I want to talk about that also behind cameras afterwards yeah. about this, about a story Okay. of somebody I know. But yeah, moving on. Um, I mean... You're not like, uh, I, I just want, like, w- I wanted to cover some points about mm-hmm. this. 
But you seem like you're not one of those fama Nazis, right? I think I was at day. some point. You were? When I was younger, for sure. <laughs> Why? Because I grew up being told that being a girl is being weak. Oh, you throw okay. like a girl, you run. I was very tomboyish. I love sports. And I was always kicked out of these sports because I'm a girl, right? Right. And thank God I lived then and not today. When I went to my mom and I said, I'm a boy. I want to be a boy. Thank God. They didn't go like, here's some hormone blocking medicine and you can switch your body parts. You <laughs> know what I mean? Because I would have been messed up for life. So yeah, I grew up very tomboyish and I wanted to be a boy because I wanted authority and I wanted to be taken serious and I wanted to do sports. That's good. You know? Yeah. So in my little young mind, I was like, this is really unfair and men suck. <laughs> and then I had like, you know, with disappointments and boys and love and being hurt, I was like, men really suck. I hate them all. <laughs> so I definitely fell into that toxic feminism at some point mm. where every man was an enemy. Yeah, men are trash, men are evil, right. et cetera, et cetera. So right. I'm able to put myself in that mentality, but it was coming from pain. How old were you? Oh, we're talking 17. Wow, that's usually the age. Yeah. That's usually the age where you're very impulsive and your emotions take over and I hate everyone and I'm a victim. You're not that <laughs> anymore, right? Well, obviously not, right? So I was coming from a place of pain, like I said, and hurt people hurt people, you know, we've mm -hmm. heard of this. And obviously with the years and with me reading and studying psychology and working on my emotional intelligence, and trying to see things from a, from an unbiased point of view, I've learned about a different kind of feminism that wasn't contaminated. You know what I mean? I, I know what you mean. Which is in its true essence of, oh yeah, we are human beings who deserve respect and yeah. aren't objects. And if a woman wants to work or stay at home, it should be a choice and not something she's forced to do. And both sides are equally respected, you know? and. If I study hard and you study hard, we should both have a chance of work. Right. See, I I told you outside before we started that my father passed away, Allah Yerhamah. Sorry. And thank you. And um, and it was very tough on my mom, right? And she was a single mom working, uh, raising two kids, which was yeah. me and my sister. So um, I understand. I understand what real feminism should be. Yeah. You know? Giving her a and, chance. Right. And it pissed me off back then. My mom did kind of struggle financially at a point. Mm. And it pissed me off because I knew what she deserved in mm. terms of wage. And the person that was in the same grade as her at this working in the same place, a man, used to get paid higher. Mm -hmm. And I used to always like tell her like, I was young. I was like, no, tell your boss you should be paid the same as mm. the person. It's like, it's okay, Habib. It's okay. Like... He's out there affording toys for his kids, but my mom can't buy me the best toys. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But then this was a short period of time. Uh, things changed. Um, and then we were back on track. You know, the because of because of the there's like inheritance involved mm -hmm. and stuff like this. So court. So um, I definitely do support, very much support women that are, Single moms. Yeah. And I generally believe that they do deserve the opportunity, the best yeah. opportunity. Like they should be placed where they they are, uh, they they should. And, but modern day feminism. <laughs> but. <laughs> but the toxic people, I yeah. really can't, I really can't take them. And it's the same with masculinity, right? It's good until it's toxic. I think every good thing yeah. Can be water. This is my favorite example. Yeah. Is essential. Without it, you can die. Too much of it, you drown. So, Correct. masculinity, very essential for men to have a space, safe space to talk about. What is about. masculinity? I don't know. I'm just saying this because it's like an uprise on masculine. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's the, and I'm coming up with this right now. It's the. Misogyny is the same or? No, I wouldn't put it. I think masculinity is talking about what makes a man masculine. It's all, it's not feminism because feminism fights for a right. Whereas masculinity is more about embodying certain things about a gender. That's how I see it. Mm. So men get together and talk about masculinity. Amazing. I think men should get together and talk about their feelings all the time. I think it's helpful. And I think they should talk about it you know, to each other about if you didn't have a dad, and you're looking up for a man, you should find a group of men that you can consult with and, and, and have advice from, and you should have supportive 
masculinity groups. I don't know how to call it. But if that's taken to the extreme, of course, it becomes toxic. And I think masculinity taken to extreme can be aggression and can be violence and can be, you know what I mean? And feminism, same thing, because the way I look at it is like masculine and feminine energy. What's a feminine energy? It's nurturing. You take that to the extreme, it's suffocating. It's controlling. Well, shouldn't a man be masculine? Should be, right? I, I mean, I think a man is a man and a woman is a woman. Who am I to judge who's masculine mm. and feminine, you know? We we all have masculine and feminine yeah. inside of us. Yeah. It's how we play that balance. Sometimes I'm more masculine, sometimes I'm more feminine. Right. And it, it depends a lot on the circumstance and my mental state. What is misogyny in your belief? In my belief, I think misogyny is uh, just pure hatred towards women. Right. Of seeing That's the right women definition. as inferior yeah. as objects as things i can own and and order around right. and not as good as me it's contempt and prejudice against yeah. women that's misogyny very dangerous in the wrong hands for sure some people misuse this word oh, just because it is a word people misuse trauma right some guy talked gave his opinion about abortion and a person that was a woman that was very, like extreme feminist mm. what immediately started shouting at him calling him a, a, a misogynist Look, from her perspective, oh. that's a man trying to control my body. He just gave an opinion. From his perspective, right. whatever his reason was, religious beliefs, philosophical, whatever, right? Maybe he's he's not about women. Maybe it's about that life that he's thinking about. Right. So I think your perception is your reality, really. Yeah. And they just live different realities. What are your thoughts on the wage gap? Look, this is a sensitive one because... On one side, I get why companies wouldn't want to invest too much into women because there's always a risk that she's gone for in Pregnancy. what in most countries is maternity leave, maternity leave which here is like three months. 52 weeks in the US. There you go. It's like about uh, a year in my 12, country. 12 weeks in, in the UK. Yeah. 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 Six months, eight months in Sorry, some European countries. 52 weeks UK, 12 weeks US. Here. Here's eight, three months. Eight weeks. Yeah. Eight weeks, two, three months. Yeah. I'm sure you, there's also ways to like talk to your company, but you get unpaid extra, whatever. Yeah. I guess I see it from a company's perspective, but if we're just looking at it from a capitalist point of view, then you as a company are not helping the society to grow. Right. You're not supporting families. So who are you as a company to not support families and reproduction? Right. You know, if, if we're looking at it from that way, I get you. Women should get paid less because there's a risk that I might not might not be there. But what about well, women? Maternity is not only. It's not the only. But you reason. know what I mean. Like yeah. that's the first. When I have these debates with people, that's the first argument I receive, which mm. is fair enough. I think men should get paternity leave. I think companies should support families altogether yep. because if I don't make children, who's going to buy your product in twenty they years? Do. They do get paternity leaves. But they don't as much as women. Yeah, five in most days. countries. Yeah. You know what I mean. In some countries, they do like three months. Where? Uh, in a lot of European countries, especially Scandinavians, man, they're so lucky. In Norway, they get like six months. Uh, correct wow. me if I'm wrong. Somebody do that. Might as go to Norway and get yeah. married. <laughs> and they do that because they understand that when you have a newborn, well, the culture, they don't live with the whole family either. Right. So, you know, it takes right. a village to raise a child. So when you have a newborn, they cry all the time. You're sleep deprived as much as your wife. You know, so I think yeah. it's only fair. It take turns, right? From a personal point of view, I've definitely been less paid than a male counterpart where I found I was more skillful and more intelligent than him. So yeah, I felt unfair and I felt like this is, you know, or the whole idea of, oh, you're a girl, what do you know about this? I can explain based on industries. Yeah. In corporate industries, if you are exactly in the same positions, exactly same skills, no, I wouldn't say skill set, experience, mm. resume, mm. grade, I think the pay grade should also be the same. Yeah, I agree. Like corporate wise. Yeah. But if but there are industries that is very understandable why men get paid more. For example, sports. Right? Oh, right? I, I see Football, where you're going with right? this. I agree. Like the more NBA, yeah, the yeah. NBA, the NBA gets uh, uh, they they get a profit of 10.5 billion yeah. US dollars a year, yeah. while the WNBA gets uh, 100 and, uh, and there's 180 statistics million. behind that. Right. Who right. watches? Who goes to these? How much money uh, spend on these events? Sold, yeah. uh, sponsors, right? It sucks, but it is what it is. Which is yeah. weird. Like, why wouldn't men want to watch girls in booty shorts playing football? <laughs> <laughs> the women that play basketball are not pretty. They're tall and, uh, and uh, tough and, you know. Well, they're, 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 someone's going to call you misogynist for saying that. <laughs> uh, I, no, but that's how they recruit them. Yeah. Based on their physical aspects. Yeah. You need to be tall to play basketball. Let's, not prejudice. let's think of another industry. Let's think of strippers. <laughs> Do women get paid more? They get paid more than men. There you go. Go cry right. about it. 
right? <laughs> no, but yeah, I'm not gonna start a whole movement and call it meninism, you know, just because <laughs> they do. But like OnlyFans, another example. Yeah. Right. But that's also supply and Girls, demand, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Right. Guys want to sorry, consumers, because they could be women that are consumers yeah. as well. Yeah. Consumers sure. want to look at would rather look at naked women than naked yeah. men. I understand why. Yeah. Yani, mashallah. No, no comment. No comment. Okay. But you know, Yani, God made women look better. You know? Yeah. They he made them look better. It's an art. It's yeah. That's yani. the way I see it. Yeah, and that's why yeah, I don't blame myself for being attracted to women, you know? <laughs> but yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, I'm 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 happy that you know we yeah, I mean, we touch on the same yeah. side. Same and, it, page. and again, like I feel like if we had this interview when I was 22, you would have gotten a very different answer from me. <sighs> so yeah. it it gets to a point in life where some people remain teenagers and some people make the choice to grow their brain and mature. Right. And, I'll, and and I'm happy that we both did that. Yeah, so yeah. you can have this conversation. I let it be sometimes. I, I have these people in my comments. I just don't respond. I know they're young. I just let it be. Um, when women them. grow up, yeah. I, mean, I pity. I'm like, how bad is your life? Like, how? what are you going look, through? A woman needs a this? man and a man needs a woman. Honestly. Unless you're playing for the other side or the same side. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like a t two straight parties. Absolutely. I, I want a woman. You want to die alone? Do you want to die alone? Do you not want to have kids? Look, if I die alone, I, die, I think everybody dies alone. But I very much appreciate what a man can do for me. Right. And in turn, when I receive that, I'm so happy to give back the things that he might not be as good at, at doing. Like right. the nurturing part, right? A woman can be very nurturing when she's safe. Yes. You know? So if you're out there hustling or doing things that... Look, I can pick up my own bags. You know, but you're stronger than me. It's nice when you do it. <laughs> Doesn't make me weak. I can still do it when you're not around. Yeah, but it's, it's nice when you do it. It's actually my duty to carry and my own And it makes me want to give you a hug and a kiss when you're done with that. Right. When we're back upstairs and, you know, like, thank you, baby. That was so sweet. That makes you feel good. Yes. That makes you feel wanted, helpful. And strong. It makes me feel protected. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Loved. It's such a beautiful union. Yes. And we're not just talking about cleaning and cooking because we're past that. It's a different generation. Most most couples these days both work. Yeah. It's the economy, man. You can't really sustain a family with one salary. Unless Probably the husband was can. super, super rich. Exactly, right? which is not the case for the yeah. majority. Yeah. So if two people work, at, most women that I know don't even know how to, I don't know how to cook. I'm a terrible cook. Are you? I'm so bad. Bro, watch some, get some cookbooks. I, I mean, I do. <laughs> I've, I've lived alone for like 10 years I know now. how to cook. I cook okay. It's not something you'd be like, I can't wait until Denise cooks again. I can but actually impress you. Be like, cooking. I didn't die. Yeah, she cooked, we ate, we <laughs> lived. But it's not something you crave out of yeah. my hands. It's just not a talent of mine. I've done it for 10 years. I'm telling you, I lived alone. Oh, you've been cooking and, you, yeah. and you're bad it's at it. It's not great. I don't, know, oh. and I don't enjoy it. You know? Okay, okay. The, it needs to be a passion. So if a man a cooks, I'd be like, babe, you cook, I'll do the dishes. Okay. Cute. Right. right? Then we can cuddle and have time to spend time together. Because you work and I work. <laughs> right. I don't think I should. you should come from work, put your feet up, and I go in the kitchen and bust my bum for another three hours. No, I think I'm going to work so hard to the point where both of us won't cook. Yeah. Somebody will cook for us. You know? Yeah. See, there right. you go. That real yeah. rich men don't let their women work. She will stay at home without a job and a maid. Yeah, that's that's actually my like. Goal. You know what I yeah. mean? It's not like, ah, oh, you are staying home and I bring money for you. You work for me. It's no, like, no, I no. love you, sweetheart. I want you to be relaxed. Here's somebody who's going to help you and you focus on loving me. And that sounds great to no, me. No, my woman is my princess. My woman is my yeah. queen. Like uh, my woman gets the bags she wants. The Chanel yeah. bags, as you and say you in your get, videos, right? Yeah, Louis Vuitton. Yeah. And you get the attention and yeah. you get the love and the, the kind, sweet touch that I only want, a woman can give. I want give. a right hand. A what? A right hand. My woman you is- said white hand. I'm no, like, no, no, what? Right hand, right hand. <laughs> yeah. Like, she's my right hand. She's like ride or die. She's yeah. my best friend. She's my status. Yeah. You know, the way she represents her, presents herself, she represents me as well. You know, and my woman versa. is like, right? Yeah. Uh, that's, that is what I see from a woman that I want to be with. How many powerful men, men in high positions, presidents, right. whatever, doctors come home and de decompress about their work with their women? And they talk about everything you know, from political things to whatever. And then she understands because she's not stupid. And mm. she's like his little advisor. 
behind this, you know what I mean? And they right. work together. And it's like, oh yeah, my, you know, actually she made sense. Maybe I should try that. And without realizing she's an influence on you. Right. Like I, I believe that the most powerful couples work that way. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely agree. I agree with you. Um, let's move on to the next subject. Yeah. yeah. I think both of us are on the same page. I feel like uh, it's boring. It's like, why are they agreeing to everything? Fight. <laughs> no, no, no. You're Disagree. a genuine. No, you're a genuine woman. You know, yeah. you're a genuine woman. I, I wasn't. I don't look for a fight. I I ask questions that I I need the answers from, and the audience, the people need. You yeah. know, because because I I represent. I also speak using the tongue of the viewers. Mm. And I know the type of followers I have. I know that, you know, what they are, what they see uh, good, what they see bad, what they are anti, what they are with. Mm. And, you know, but most people hate the toxicity that, yeah. you know. But as long as people are not toxic, I think the world is going to be a better place. And thank God you're like that. So you're genuine. You're genuine. Thank you. And uh, yeah, um, any paranormal stories? <laughs> Look, we had a little chat earlier when I tell you I, I come from a very, a place that really embraces these stories. Romania has a long history of witchcraft and all sorts of weird uh, practices. So definitely growing up, I've heard stories. I'm lucky enough to say that I have never seen or witnessed something that would really shake me and be, you know, like so sure that I've seen a spirit or anything like that, mm -hmm. but I've definitely experienced and felt and I believe in it, you know? So I think when you believe it, but I have a very logical mind. So the moment I feel something I'm like, oh, but that could have been something else right. or it's in your head or you, you're making yourself believe because you already believe in it. So you're more susceptible to it. Yes. I have a horror story for you. Ooh. This horror story took place back in 2011 uh, in Sharjah, a local family. Mm. So the person that told me the story was, his name is Majid. And he was 18 years old back at the time, 2011, long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, his father bought a house in Sharjah, a house that was already there. Mm. It wasn't brand new. Ooh. People lived in it, right? People maybe died in it too. That's such a fear of mine. Yeah. Mm. Always. Yeah. My like, yeah, I want to construct my own house. That's it. You know, you know what I mean? So as soon as they moved in, Majid started getting dreams, bad dreams, nightmares. Mm. And it was the same nightmare every single night. The same nightmare. It would be exactly the same. It's identical every single night. He goes to his dad and he tells him, Baba, listen, I'm getting nightmares. And the nightmare is like, it ha it's the same nightmare every single time and it's about the house. He's like, what's your dream? Like, tell it to mm. me in detail. He says, okay, this is the dream. I sleep. I start dreaming of a child that I meet in the house. It's always that little girl, a child. Mm. She holds my hand. She looks cute and beautiful, like an innocent child, not an evil demonic child. Mm. No, like an innocent child. Holds my hand, takes me to the back of the house. And apparently there's a water tank there. And as we go and check to see what is inside the water tank, we, me and the child get attacked by a demonic black dog. And then that's when I wake up. So he's like, so every, so I dream this every single time. Every time we get close to the tank, demonic black dog attacks me and the child. He's like, let's go check out the tank. Okay. Like, is there a tank there? The son's never been to the back. He's like, yeah, there is a tank actually. They go, Majid sees the tank, he's like, holy shit, that is the tank from the dream. And he's never seen it before. He's never seen it before. They just moved in. It's been like a couple of weeks. I'll pack my bags and leave. <laughs> On the spot, 18, really? I'm old enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> so imagine what they see. They open the tank. They see something wrapped in so much material. <gasps> Witchcraft. Yeah, that, is, that protects things inside. I just dropped remember. inside the water tank all the way deep, but it's intact because it's clean water. They pull it out. They call the imams. They discovered it was witchcraft done to a child. Why? There was a picture of the child and that <gasps> child was a girl from the dream. Yeah. He said, as soon as we undid that, 
A few days later, he dreams of the same little girl and hugging him. Hugging him, and he never dreamt of her again. He doesn't know if this, uh, if this child is a dead person or a person that is alive because that could be her conscious visiting mm-hmm. his dream. Not, con- not her conscious, well, her, her protector angel or protector that is a jinn or, you know. But they didn't open it by themselves, right? Because you're not supposed to open it because that could fall on you. There is a procedure, an yes. Islamic procedure, yeah. And yeah. Sharjah is a, like an Islamic state, right? Yes. It's a, a very Islamic city and it's full of uh, very well-educated uh, da'yas and imams and exorcists. So, yeah, of course, they call exorcists and they do the Islamic procedure. But I believe that they throw it either in the ocean or they burn black magic. And that's how they undo it. But with a, yeah. obviously, there's a ritual behind it where they have to do like a ruqya shari'iyah. They have to read Quran. And then there's like a procedure where they undo it. Wow. It just reminded me of something now. We've had something like this. So I had a neighbor yeah. who's doing all sorts of things, but tarot reading being one of them, that's kind of what people we used to go to her for. Yeah. But apparently she would do like tying and untying of marriages and whatever. That's oh. what it is. You tie or you untie. Right. And and I think my grandma had a fight with her once or whatever the reason was. I was young. And one day my grandma finds this piece of cloth that inside has something with blood in it. Mm. most likely from a sacrificed animal, tied up, thrown into our garden. She saw it. She's like, oh, hell no. Oh, shit. You know? <laughs> and apparently, yeah. now I'm sorry for sharing this, but apparently you're supposed to pee on it, burn it, and then bury the ashes under the ground and do a prayer or something. Off the witchcraft Yeah, um, so you're not supposed spell. to untie it. You don't touch it. Uh. But this is like, you know, like no priests or involved actually when you untie it what i heard when you untie it that's when it gets unlinked detached i don't know see different different backgrounds different beliefs right. apparently you're not supposed to mess with it whatever it is shit, right it's always a spell and yeah. it's wrapped up yeah it's always wrapped up yeah. with a picture mm. or dna piece of dna or oils oils yeah that's well, another thing i heard in both like arab culture and like back home they do something, I don't know what it is with oil, because even in church, they put a little oil in your forehead. Yeah. It's almost like, I don't know, it's supposed to be like good well, luck or a blessing. Have you ever thought of putting a spell on someone? Yes. Negatively or positively? <laughs> I was well, young. Look, they're both bad. No, I was young and these stories were around. So yes, I have thought about it. I have oh. thought about ruining somebody's life. But Fuck then, sakes, Denise. But I'm also raised Christian, so instantly I felt guilt. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to burn in hell for yeah. Your mom's forever. Muslim, right? Yeah, she's, uh, she's uh, converted. I can imagine how how, how much uh, she, she slapped you, right? Did she find, <laughs> she find out? or <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about me being very young. I wouldn't. I wouldn't oh. want to put like, because now I like, I also knew that if you do that, you got to sacrifice something. So uh, something yes. you lose from your life if you do right. that. Whatever it is. So you got to the right place. You actually reached the right... Uh, yeah, yeah. You're, no, you're I right. thought about it. I didn't even have the means to make it happen. Yeah. But I got, I got angry. And I'm like, I wish I could just put a spell on you and you'd never be happy. But obviously that... I wouldn't go there. <laughs> oof, 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 oof. I thought about doing good spells. That's for sure. That's the whole crystal meditating, you know? Yeah. But I don't know how much of that I want to play with either. See... There, there are, I've seen many, many, so I like, I read a lot about this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But in an Islamic uh, context. Okay. So I understand it from an Islamic point of view. Yeah. And an Arabic point of view, culturally. And there's this Sahar, Sahar means uh, like a witch, but okay. male, male, guy witch. Okay. Well, what, do you, what do you call a guy witch, a warlock or a whatever? Wizard? wizard, yeah, mm. whatever, witch, right? Yeah. And he was, he, he's an ex-witch. He used to be uh, a, a white witch. A white witch, in Arabic, he's, mm. he, he named himself Sahar Abyad. So like a white witch. A white witch meaning he only does spells for good, yeah. for good things. Yeah. And then the, um, the dark witches are the ones that do spells for bad. Mm-hmm. So he used to like fix couples' marriages that used mm. to fight a lot. But using demons. Mm-hmm. You will always go back to the mm-hmm. same reference. You will use jinns mm-hmm. to fix your problems. That, that's not the way. You have to rely on God. You know, He will fix your problems. I've had stories in my village who's had like women's husbands just left one night, the kids, everybody, and just left with another woman the next <laughs> day. 
Wow. Oh. And never spoke to them again. You see? And then one day he goes to church to marry that woman. And he comes back for one day saying, I don't know what happened. And then he left again the next day, never spoke to them again. Yeah. Possession. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Shit is strong. That got me goosebumps. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's a strange world we live in. You know, I, every day, every single day, from how much I talk about this horror stuff, horror stories, gins, possessions, these creepy pasta stuff, I always learn something new every single time before I make a video. I recently understood what kind of beings gins are. What They're, are they? They are fourth dimensional beings. You know how dimensions work, right? Yeah. So 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D. They are they are in a tesseract. We are in a 3D dimension. Yeah. They are in a tesseract, meaning they can go through walls, they can come out the floor, go to the ceiling, go back, go to space, and they can manipulate time. Did they used to be angels, people, or are they just their own kind who were never something else? They are, they are see, mm, good question. Very, very long time ago, there were beings on Earth. Earth is not ours. Mm -hmm. We are like the aliens of Earth. We're not, it's not ours. Uh, based on like scriptures, mm. Islamic scriptures. On Earth, there used to be jinn, bin, and min. And some people say hain and so like other, like, and we are ins. Ins is human. Mm -hmm. Jinn is jinn. Mm -hmm. Then bin, which are instinct okay. Ic, no, instinct extinct extinct, extinct. Yeah. <laughs> like they don't exist anymore bin and min they don't exist anymore the only two that still exist are jinn and ins so they used to be creatures back then and had wars with the jinn and jinn caused chaos mm. this is very very historic i'm talking millions of millions of millions of years ago scriptures right scriptures say that we don't know so what did they gain from interacting with us Actually, no, astaghfirullah, the Qur'an says it. If I'm not mistaken, the Qur'an says it. They don't get nothing. They're better than us in terms of power. So why are they messing with us? <laughs> it's fun for It's them. just fun? It's just for yeah. giggles? No, it's, it's, their, it's their purpose. That's their purpose. Look, not all jinns are stronger than humans. They're obviously, you know, the, the, yeah. power, the, the, the word of God, the Qur'an, yeah. ref, like, can, can burn them, you know? Yeah. But physical wise, they are stronger, they are faster, they are bigger, they are everything better than humans. Do you believe that people can sell their, I'm, I feel like I'm doing the interview. Do you believe <laughs> that people can sell their soul to the devil? Of course. Yeah. yeah but what do you get in return? You well, die, right? Eventually, you, everybody dies. Then what? You get you go to money hell. and fame. Yeah. Right? Or whatever it is that you're. But you know you go to hell eventually. Yeah. It's a point. It's greed. Yeah. So much greed. Lust. So then, this is not the real world. The real world is yeah. later. Do you believe in a reincarnation? Yeah. I know you're Muslim, but I don't know how much of that falls into your beliefs. Yeah, of course. So we have the Yom al Qiyamah. We will come out again. Us. Our, but that's oh, you're talking about day. from from soul to soul, like soul to from yeah. one body to no, no. We like don't, you live multiple lives. I don't believe in that. Okay. I don't believe in that. Even though there are some stories that freak me out, like when, past lives, like yeah, you like were how, something else in your past. Yes, yes, life. yes, yes. Like how children would see a plane crash and they go like, "Mama, this is where I." Yeah. This is where that's I. That's what I'm talking about. Those stories of very young children having revel very vivid, detailed explanations of their previous lives that could be researched or whatever. Like that's what freaks me yeah. out. See, God in the Quran says uh, there will always be things you will never know. So I guess yeah. we'll never know. Yeah, right? we'll never know. I got, there are things that are unanswered. Uh, it's not like you know, the, there are many things that are missing. That you don't know in the mm. Bible, in the Torah, in of the Quran. Course. There are many things you want to know more. That is why the, there, there are prophets in place, right? Jesus, Or maybe Abraham. they're there, but our 3D mind and perception, because yeah. we, this is all we know and all we see, yeah. we don't understand it. We, don't under, we cannot comprehend the tesseract. different intelligence. Yeah, you know a tesseract, so like a 1D is a line, a 2D is a plane. Yeah. A 3D are six cube. planes, yeah. a cube. <laughs> a tesseract is a moving... Yeah. Cube going inside of itself. I'm trying to, I'm still remember like me trying to wrap my head around fourth yes. dimension. Uh, yeah. So imagine that is a particle. Yeah. Of everything around you. You will not be able to even look 
You cannot look at it. We can't see everything yeah. anyway. Yeah, and no. this real, you know, this this table, like every, this is moving. Right. It's got atoms that are vibrating. Yeah, They're friction. not touching. They're, They're just, right. I can't see it. Yes. It's all frequency. Exactly. The frequency of Everything cameras, here is not real. Yeah. They're emitting waves that we can't see right now. Right. So what makes you think that there are other things in here that just because your eye doesn't see doesn't mean it's not there? Right. Our vision on a spectrum of light yes. is so small. Exactly. Compared to everything else that's around us. That's we a don't very have... good understanding of the 4D yeah. dimension. Yeah. Yes, yes. So that's why they can see and we can't. That's why they can go through walls and we can't. I believe in energy as well. Uh, yeah. Believe in having a little, and you really can work around that energy. When yeah. you're scared, that's when they can get you, right? That's yes. what they told me. Exactly. Grandma was like, if you're scared and you feel that creeping feeling in the back, that's when they get you. Yeah. And that's when you got to be brave and bring God into the conversation. Yeah. Nature is beautiful. And it's just, you feel your energy shifting. You yeah. go from being scared to being courageous and having this weird courage of like, I'm not afraid, you know? And then your energy changes. Yeah. I believe in it. I don't have any evidence, but I believe in it. Of course. <laughs> Speaking of that, it's, it's, uh, I think our energy is connected to nature. Yeah. I've heard a conspiracy. Well, a lot of people don't believe it's a conspiracy, the uh, conspiracy theory. A lot of people say that this is a fact and they can somehow prove it through science, right? They say how the rubber on the feet, on our feet is actually disconnecting us from earth. Yeah. Right? And our feet, our feet are not actually supposed to look like how they look. They're actually supposed to be more spread roundish, out, spread yeah. out. Yeah, like monkey feet. Yeah. And there are frequencies that we get from yeah. through our heels to our bodies. But they that prove that. There was, there was somebody like, uh, you connect to a machine and they look at the electromagnetic waves or the frequency of, of your body. And then when you touch the ground versus when you when you're on your shoe, then yeah. it just changes. I believe in that. That's why I do I do grounding. I do earthing. I, I sit barefoot. I hug trees. I do all of that. It yeah. changes my thoughts. Yeah, there are receptors on yeah. Earth, right? That we yeah. get. And you know yeah. how everything is connected. If you watch that, there is a documentary about shrooms and how their roots of the trees and everything is connected. They, they talk to each, to each other. other. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. This is true. Yeah, is true. they speak to each other, which is why I use like trees in my little cuckoo era to connect with like ancestors or past because I feel like there's so much information, right. so much data. Yeah. If I just touch it and connect with them, I get some of that wisdom <laughs> in a weird way. Right. Let me tell you something about the palm tree. The palm tree. Yeah, interesting information. I touch palm trees all the time. You do? Yeah, people think I'm weird, but when I'm in a oh. park, I just like... Hello. I want to talk about the Arabic palm tree that does not grow anywhere else but the Middle East and not anywhere in the Middle East, like only Yemen, Saudi, Emirat, Qatar, like the GCC yeah. and uh, Iraq and some parts of Yemen, not all parts because some parts in Yemen are, tro are, are tropical. tropical yeah. This only grows in the desert. So it's the Nakhla, the Arabic palm tree. Is it the one that makes dates? Dates, ah. exactly. Something very interesting information about it, you know, to show you how beautiful plants are and how connected they are with you. Um, when you plant a nakhla mm -hmm. um, and you die as the one that used to feed it and you planted it, it will die with you. No. I swear to God. I'm sure there's studies on it. There's a study. Yeah. Wow. It will die with you. And it gets sick when you no longer feed it. When somebody else comes and feeds it, it it uh, it knows apparently who is the person that is feeding this tree. Wow. Yeah, it dies when you die. I don't know how it knows, because when you die, you go back to Earth. You come from Earth and you go back, right? But what about the commercially commercially planted trees? I don't know. You I'm, know the ones that you get a company to oh, plant yeah, yeah. them and. <laughs> no, these some some plants are like I feel like they don't have that much. Like free, like I, I generally believe like it's plant to plant differs. But there is a study about if you have plants and you speak to them, you know about it. I'm sure you do. Oh yeah. Right. The one with the rice and the water. It's not just, it's just any plant. Yeah. You know, they did that where they spoke beautiful words, encouraging, loving words to one plant. And then they dissing the other the hate, ones. And, and the, the hate plant died. They watered them the same. They kept them in the same condition. <laughs> the hate one died and the other one blossomed. Uh, That's why I talk to my plants and any plants and really? animals. And anything that's living. <laughs> wow. Because even though they don't understand language, they understand frequency. Yeah. Yeah. They do. My cat does. I know for sure. My cat understands me. It's beautiful. Yeah. Nature is beautiful. Every time I put shoes on, I swear, I remember that, you know, this is a bad idea. Somebody made shoes that has a little copper 
copper dot or whatever that's touching your skin and it touches the ground to help you ground yourself because yeah. copper is a good um what's the word travels yeah. electricity you think the governments are behind this <laughs> what they don't want you to be atta- like uh, like um, uh, connected to earth i like to believe i I, believe, I entertain a lot of conspiracy theories but i think some of them are a reach i think shoes came as um a convenience and yeah. to protect ourselves because you can step on things that can get you sick and have an infection. Definitely. You you know what I mean? And first shoes, I think, were made of wood yeah. or something like yeah, that. Japan. So yeah. I, I don't think it was a conspiracy to disconnect us. I think it came from convenience and need to survive. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, the fact that we've taken that and turned it into rubber and never touched the ground, that's just evolution and, and, and uh, greed and capitalism. Uh, uh, yeah, the, just the last question, since we don't have yeah. much time left. Um, I do want to address this, you know, mm. because we're going through tough times right now with the whole Palestinian situation. Mm. Um, is there a, what, what? What's your stance on it? Come on. Oh, of course, yeah. Palestine. I know, I know. Is there something you want to tell Palestine? Tell the people of Palestine. <laughs> tell the supporters of Palestine. I said I wasn't gonna cry. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I can't do more. Mm. I'm sorry that we can't do more. I've never felt more, it's not about me. I hate saying I've never felt because compared to what they feel, it's nothing, but I've never felt more useless in my entire life. And no child in the world, oh my God, no child in the world deserves this. And and even, I, I it's just... I know that it's almost like I know that they're they're gonna wipe them out, you know. Yeah. And yeah, okay, yeah, you made history, but at what cost? And I know I'm not partaking in it, but I feel guilty for not doing more. Mm. And I'm just sorry that this is happening. I hate talking about it because I've been following their story since I left Europe where the media was very pro-US and they were painting the whole region in a different light. And then the moment I moved to the GCC and I started seeing real life, real footage from the place, I was was absolutely shocked at the difference in journalism. And that angered me so much. The BBC and Al Jazeera are literally in a war. (laughs) Yeah. One is every, like both have one side to pick yeah you know, and the bbc is showing how bad palestine is and al jazeera is showing the truth and the fact that there are israelis celebrating oh. the death of innocent people yeah. just happy. yesterday actually yeah 300 people yesterday one one how listen. can you be happy that children are dead you know i talked to them on omegle not omegle omi tv the omegle yeah. alternate alternative website app and i put israel on purpose as a location to speak to yeah and they can see where i'm from united yeah. arab emirates dubai yeah these assholes you if i tell you the things they've told me i don't even want to hear i it. swear to god i've seen a few videos of people where they're just like yeah i'm happy yeah let them die like yeah they're dogs and i'm like that sounds familiar <laughs> have you heard of hamas.com no it's a new website apparently the propaganda about it is it's a web it's the official website of hamas right hamas.com it was promoted by israel and it was launched by israel the government right yeah, they because made who in palestine is going to build web design you know yeah. what i mean in the yeah. middle of all of this yeah. and hamas will never actually do this because the domain of Hamas.com was actually was actually purchased through Wix, and Wix is an Israeli company. Is it? Yeah, and they got caught like that quick. It was just it's from Wix.com. <laughs> Hamas.com <laughs> was generated through Wix.com, and uh, and uh, they immediately put them through uh, virus checkers, like American people, and they found malicious, suspicious malware and phishing mm. detected mm-hmm. from this website. They can literally extract information from you 
if you go to Hamas.com. So for everybody watching this, do not go visit Hamas.com unless you actually have a hacking laptop that you know you'll be safe if you just want to check it out. Yeah. And what, but the most messed up part about it is the official Twitter account of Israel. Yeah. Put that link as a tweet. They want people to press it. They want people to press yeah. it. Yeah. They promoted the link on their official Twitter page. I've never seen so much propaganda in an age where information is free and at everybody's fingertips and how you can shamelessly use AI. Yeah. Or, you know, Greta Thunberg, what's her name? Yeah. You know, she's pro-Palestine. They manipulated videos of her to say she supports Israel. I, like, I actually never... I, somebody yeah. took a picture of mine and put the Israeli flag and says, I support Israel and then tagged me in it. And I had to block that person. you serious? Because in the beginning of this, I was very aggressively posting about Palestine. Yeah. The amount of hate and death threats and terrible things that were said, I will find you, I'll find where you live. All these terrible things that people can say to you, mostly Europeans, that... People started like, create, you know, and I started like looking at these people who were attacking me on their profiles and it was all propaganda videos. All. And it, it worries me that I understand if this happened 50, 60 years ago, but today, yeah. you know, but it's an information war. You have analysis paralysis when it's so yeah. much information, you don't know what to believe in anymore. They're using that white sulfur stuff. Yeah. Fucked. Yeah. It's really bad. It's a war. There's just continuous war crimes. I don't see them stopping. It's not even war crimes. It's a genocide. It's, it's their land. <laughs> it's a genocide. Yeah, it's, it's, a genocide. It's, it's wiping an entire race. Yeah. Because you want to what? Build a park? Nova City. Remember? I don't know if you saw my post. Yeah. 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 Nova City. <laughs> It's but they won't they won't lose because uh, because it says it in the Quran. They won't lose. Uh, they no the so Israelis won't win. The Jews won't win. They might have a small victory. For now. Yeah. 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 I don't know. The more you know, just to end it on something, because we were talking about religions, and I looked at the end of times. I actually had a very interesting conversation with my mom, and we looked at the the end of times that's written in the Bible and the Quran and there's so many things in common. It's literally the same thing. We have yeah. the judge and my judge. We have the everything, yes, yes, yes. everything and all the signs. It's literally almost the same. Correct. Um, and there are signs. Now, is the end going to take 10 years or 100 years? We don't know. You know, because time is not written in those books the same that way that we see it. Right. And like you said, in the fourth reality, time is very different. It all happens at the same time. There's no past, present and Exactly. On a line, it's all happening simultaneously. Exactly. But, you know, if that does happen, <laughs> I was telling my mom, like, if that does happen, I'm like, what's the quickest way to convert on the spot? <laughs> mm. <laughs> if I can just, you yeah. know, like if I see monsters that's literally the coming out. Yeah, it's that's what she said. She's yeah. like, you know what to say. Like, you, yeah. you don't have to wait for that. I'm like, that's one thing I'll do and I'll die happy. Would you fight to survive during an apocalyptic time? I will. I wouldn't. I will for real. It, it's 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 a dream come true. It's like going inside a video game in real time. I wouldn't. I'm a woman. You know what happens to women in apocalyptic post apocalyptic world, right? Or oh, Resident Evil. They're actually one of the main characters. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't. Is I would be happy to just have an accident and go in a peaceful way. And <laughs> yeah. Well, I wanted to end this on a good note. Unfortunately, we ended this uh, on a note. We ended it with reality. You started crying. People were pissed off because I had my foot here. But I generally, <laughs> like, when I noticed that my foot was up and you were crying, I had to put it down. <laughs> I was like, so people don't get upset again. Oh, man. Yeah, it is what it is. These, these chairs are weird to sit on, okay? I don't blame him. I'm they're like comfy, moving. They're comfy. Yeah, so you, when you put your leg like that, yeah. it makes sense. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you it for was a great podcast. Making me cry when you no, you touched the uh, the very last bit on yeah. something that I couldn't stop myself. Yeah, I apologize for that. <laughs> but yeah, no, really, thank you for the time. I really thank appreciate you. it. Is there anything you want to say? If there is one thing that you can do today that costs you nothing, just be kind. We have enough terrible people in the world. Just be kind. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Thank you so much, Denise. Namaste. <laughs> and we have unmasked her, I guess, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
We'll see you on the next episode. Stay tuned. Bye.